By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, so the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the top eight of the Knights of Thorn. I'm really looking forward to this episode, to this battle. You know, we have Gwen from Belgium who's on a white blue a mid range, taking on Richard who's on a deck with Sheevan Dragons and Atox. So a very interesting list. So I can't wait to see these two decks going face to face. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to skip this first go to the games check out the deck text later i know some people prefer to do this the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads mtg game so if you click on there it'll take you straight to the games and in that same description below you can also find more information about the rules of this tournament and this tournament we are playing swedish rules meaning no fallen empires only one strip mine and no mana burn okay we're almost ready to start i would just like to point out that i also have my very own patreon page so if you want to support the channel please check out patreon.com slash timmy talks okay now that's out of the way i'm going to start with the deck text i'm going to start with the deck of gwen and his blue white control list let's have a look and here we see the deck of gwen so i've called it just blue white mid-range um at first glance, you may think, oh, that's the deck, right? But then you when you take a closer look, you see, oh, wait a minute, it has a lot of creatures, Savannah Lines, Sarah Angel, Suchis, and also it's missing the Jam Day Tomes main, right? There are two in the sideboard, but there are none main. So it's really this, this thing, and I find it quite interesting that we see how people change the deck, how, it's, uh, how the meta is shifting, you could say. So some people choose to make the deck... Uh, way more aggressive by adding red, you know, for bolts, for example. Other people are choosing to, you know, to do this, to just add more creatures. Other people make it creatureless, you know, make it maybe more uh, more controlling. So it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how people use the deck and as basically as an inspiration, as a starting point. I guess when you have, of course, blue-white as your starting point, you will always have the sword supply shares and the counter spells and the disenchants because they're super good cards. And of course, your power nine cards, ancestral recalls and that. So, I mean, that kind of, kind of makes sense. And we see all those cards coming back in here. And of course, that black splash as well for Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. But uh, personally, I kind of like to see a list like this with a little more creatures. You know, because then I'm, I'm a fan of combat. When when you play something out, your opponent usually has has to respond. Things will happen. The combat step is an interesting step. So I'm, I'm liking at least the development that we're seeing more creatures in the game. Now, um, you know, the, the most slots here are pretty much cut and dry, right? It's really what you would expect. It is interesting, of course, to, to see a Suchi. Suchi is quite good in Swedish. Why? Because there's no mana burn. So it's a 4-4 for 4, 4, 4 without a downside which makes it quite good, but in my opinion, not too good. And I can understand if you don't play Swedish often, you're used to having mana burn, you would say, ah, that card is overpowered if you play it without mana burn. But from my personal experience, I can tell you, whenever I play a Suchi, it dies so quickly. You know, you've got Divine Offering, Disenchant, you know, all that artifact removal works on it, creature removal works on it as well, and it only has four toughness, so it's still in Psionic Blast range also. So there are quite a lot of like ways to to kill it of course it does work together quite well against the abyss so if you're playing against a player with the abyss it's quite nice to play it and of course it doesn't die to city in a bottle or to a terror so th there are some pluses to this card um for me i i, I think suchi i wouldn't quickly play for main maybe i would play two main and two in the sideboard something like that um but yeah so it's interesting to see you went for a full four so it's it's quite aggressive in that sense that you have your four savannah lines that you want to deploy turn one and then you kind of maybe want to protect it with some counter magic you know play some answers out wait for the right moment to play a piece of power and really get ahead on board but the real magic is happening in your your hand right the real magic is responding to what your opponent's going to do and talking about the opponent we have richard of course and he's playing four shivan dragon let's have a look at his deck and here we see the deck of Richard. So I've called this Atok Dragon for very obvious reasons, right? He's playing three Atoks and a full playset. I love it of Sheevan Dragons. And of course, because he's playing with Atoks, there are a lot of artifacts in the deck as well. And I just always love it when players do something else, you know? Normally when people play Atok, it's usually with red, uh, with artifacts, and they go the route of Black Vice, Ank of Mishra. And rightfully so, don't get me wrong, that's a very strong combination, but I just get excited when I see something else. 
In this case, we see the Mana Vault in combination with the Atok, which works fine, right? Mana Vault can hurt you, it can even kill you, but if you've got the Atok, you can sack it to that and even give the Atok a bonus. And before you do that, of course, you're going to use that Mana Vault. And then for what are you going to use it? What is cooler than casting Shivan Dragons? Maybe Mahamoti Jin, maybe, but I'm biased. <laughs> but Shivan, man, that's such a cool creature to cast. And he's got four in his deck, so that's going to be fun. He also has another creature that's a six drop. That is a Triskelion. Triskelion, again, works really well with the Atok, because when you take the counters off, you can feed it to the Atok. And it kind of fits that red vibe very well, because it's also a way to deal direct damage, right? Basically, in, in, in Trike is a very expensive lightning bolt that you can divide, right? So it's... It's, as we know now, a super good card. And again, interesting here, he hasn't chosen to go full out with the with the uh, Triskelion. He's not like, I'm gonna play, for example, uh, copy artifacts to copy my trike. No, no, no. It's like, you know, I'm playing Shivan and Triskelion. I can cast them early with my Mana Rocks and, of course, with the Mana Vaults. I can feed those later to my Atok, and Atok looked very strong here. He also has... Uh, a lot of X spells, right? Two disintegrates and a fireball. Normally in these decks, you maybe see one fireball, but he's chosen to go for three uh, in total. So that's uh, that's pretty, you know, that's that's a clear choice that he's made. That's my point, I guess. He's also playing, of course, with four lightning bolts. Uh, he's got a wheel of fortune, a balance, playing with two disenchants, which which I think is important because the problem sometimes with these decks is you run into uh, enchantments like a moat that you cannot get rid of. Although you can fly over the moat with the Shivan, I guess. Um, you know, an Abyss, maybe that's a better example with the Shivans. You can disenchant it. It's sometimes hard when you're only playing red and have that uh, blue splash to deal with enchantments. So it's really good to have that disenchant here. And of course, after sideboarding, if your opponent plays a CLP red, you can also deal with that with the disenchant. So I really understand that little white splash here in the deck. And then, yeah, I know we've got, you know, we've got our black splash. We've got the Demonic Tutor and the Mind Twist. Yeah, I know. I understand. And then we have, of course, our, our Blue Splash, the Time Walk, the Time Twister, and the Ancestral Recall. That's actually another thing I like about this deck is the Draw 7s, Wheel of Fortune, and the Time Twister. Yes, they are also really good in a deck with Burn, like with all the Bolts, but it's also just fun. You know, it's fun to play a game where someone goes, you know what, let's Twister and let's see what's going to happen. I like that. Uh, even though in these decks, it's probably better for the Shard right, than for the opponent. But overall, this deck is looking very strong. And, I mean, I can't wait to just see these Shivan Dragons in action. I'm really looking forward to it. So let's go to the top 8 match of the Knights of Thorn 10th edition. Game number 1, here we go, of the quarterfinals of the Knight of Thorn. Gwen on the play, playing uh, white-blue mid-range, taking on Richard. And he is uh, playing a deck with Atox, Shivan Dragons, and Triskelions. Pretty cool list. And tapping two here, there's a Mana Vault, there's a second Mana Vault. Okay, so could this mean Sheev and Dragon next turn? That would be really cool. One more land drop and he only needs one of the two Mana Vaults to cast the Sheevan. Let's see if Gwen has something. Okay, this is actually pretty good. City of Brass means he's got counter magic open. He could now simply pass and if Richard decides to play something out, something big like a Sheevan, he can just counter it. Richard here drawing card for turn. Let's see if he can do something with all the mana vaults. If he wants to do something, I can also imagine that he just uh, plays a land, passes turn. Tapping two here. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. Interesting. And are we going to see a count? Nope, no counter spell by Gwen taking his turn. Ooh, there's a strip mine. And then the question is, is he going to use the strip mine? He could, of course, strip the plateau. Also because Richard was in, uh, had some mana issues, so I can imagine that's quite tempting for him to do. He's really in the tank, maybe thinking about it. I also wonder if Gwen has a disenchant in hand. Because if he does, he can then of course wait for Richard to activate the Chaos Orb and then in response disenchants. There could be a scenario here also for Gwen that he's kind of light on land, so that he's thinking, well, I could use my strip mine here, but then maybe I'm going to run out of lands myself. So he's really deep into the tank. Yeah, Richard here uh, enjoying his beer. 
Both players still on 20. There's the pass. Okay, untap, upkeep, draw. And I mean, I can also imagine like a line of play by Richard here where he says, I'm going to activate the Chaos Orb to see if you have that disenchant. If you do, then you can no longer counter. He can have a land drop and play something big, but I guess he didn't find another land, just passes, so he missed two land drops. So I would be really tempted if I'm Gwen to just kind of take care of the plateau. Looks like he just passes though. So both players being very patient here at this stage in the game. <laughs> Tapping the ruby. Okay, there's a bolt to the dome. So Gwen dropping here to 17. And now we also, is this an activation? Yeah, activation of Chaos Orb. I'm assuming this all happens at end step. Are we going to see a response by Gwen? There is a disenchant, so he's going to take a damage from that, but the Chaos Orb is gone. The positive news here for Richard, though, is that Gwen is basically tapped out, only has that uh, strip mine. So that means if Richard has a Triskelion, for example, or a Sheevan Dragon, now is the moment to cast it. Let's see if Richard can do something here. Going through the cards in hand. Ooh, passing the turn. This is bad news for Richard and good news here for Gwen. I'm sure that he's kind of relieved, you know, tapping out, but it has no consequence. And I mean, Richard has really been stuck on this one land for a long time. There's another pass. Also, Gwen not playing out any lands, by the way. So both players very light on lands. There's a Loa, so Library of Alexandria, of course, Gwen still has that strip, so doesn't have to worry too much. Ooh, tapping six, are we going to see something big? There's a Triskelion. Try hitting the board, 4-4, four, four, no counter magic. So even if he has a sword here, then at least uh, Richard can deal some damage to him. Or a disenchant, of course. So, okay, there's a sword to Plowshare, so three damage here to Gwen, who's going to drop... To 13, I guess, also tapping the City of Brass, so he would go to 12, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly, changing the dice here, so he drops to 12. And also, Richard has now tapped one of his mana vaults down, so it's going to start hurting him as well. Just one damage, though, and he's still really high up in life, but still. Here we see a Black Lotus. So I guess this comes from the top of the deck, so I wonder... If you're Gwen, do you want to crack, for example, the Lotus to play a big threat? I mean, it is risky if then your opponent takes care of it. I mean, a Sarah Angel for toughness is a little bit tricky for Richard to deal with. I believe he plays two Disintegrates and a Fireball. Doesn't play any Swords to Plowshares. So that would mean if he's got an next spell, he would also tap the Vault next turn. But let's first see, does Gwen want to do something here? And understandably so, he's taking his time. I mean, the ideal line with the Black Lotus, right, is to use it, for example, for a Mind Twist or a Brain Geyser. Or just keep the Lotus so that you can always have counter mana up. That's another option as well. Sometimes it pays off to go for the creature, but in a lot of cases it ends up being a two for one. So cracking the Lotus, also taking a damage. So tapping five, are we going to see a Sarah? Yep, there's the Sarah Angel. 4-4 four, four Flyer that doesn't have to tap when it attacks. One of the most popular creatures in old school. And also here we see a strip. So taking care of the plateau. So no more white mana here for Richard. And uh, his mana problems inten are intensifying. And of course taking damage from that Vault. Dropping to 20. So if Richard has a Fireball here or Disintegrate, he will have to tap out completely. But now is the time to do it because also Gwen is kind of tapped out. So doesn't have any counter magic open. So here we see him tapping five. Yep, there's a Fireball for four. Taking care of the Angel. Passing the turn. I mean, 
it's an interesting game. Like, it's not the kind of game I, I, I expected because both players are so light on their mana sources. And, and now Richard has a double mana vault tapped, so that's going to start hurting. There's a disenchant. Yeah, of course, you're going to target the mana base here of Richard. Try to hit him where it hurts. He's going to take two from the vaults, dropping to 18. Passing the turn, not finding any more lands. Maybe he wants to go up to activate the Loa. Anyway, here we see another City of Brass. I mean, that's also quite painful. Gwen, of course, being on 10 already. <laughs> and there's the pass. 16 here for the shirt. Okay, there's a City of Brass. I mean, again, it's hurting you, but it's better than no lands. I wonder how many cards he's got in hand. Is that five? Gonna tap two here, take a damage, go to 15. What are we gonna see? There's an Atog. Ooh, this is really good. He can feed the Mana Vault to the Atog, but there's the Counterspell. That is unfortunate here. Counterspell countering away the Atog. Yeah, this is pretty big, this counter. I mean, Richard, if he could have resolved, could have kept the Atok, he could have fed the vaults to it. He would stop taking damage and he could also swing in on Gwen's life total. It would have been a win-win, but um, it didn't happen. Gwen now being on nine, by the way. I believe three cards in hand for Gwen. Did find the Tundra, so finding some more lands out. Oh, interesting moment. Wow. Playing the city in a bottle, so he's destroying two of his own lands, but more importantly, also destroying the two lands on the side of Richard. And I mean, this makes sense. If you're Gwen, you're like, okay, what I want to do now is I want to make sure that he never gets enough lands to untap the mana vaults. We're just going to keep those tapped. He's on 13. I just need seven more turns. You know, that is a strategy. And now he can untap again, keep counter magic open. You see, just passing the turn. He's fine. Just take the damage. There's a bad lance. And I think if you're a research, you have to hope to find an ATOC and that you can actually get the ATOC to resolve, which which is really tough. But you just have to be lucky that maybe Gwen doesn't have another counter spell in hand, which could be the case, of course. He's got four cards there. And I believe his deck has a full play set of counter spells and a mana drain. There's the pass. Two more damage. So he shirt on nine now. So it's starting to become problematic. Both players now on nine, but if you're a you're really starting to worry now. And again, no Lance. Gwen also just passing turn. I mean, he's fine with the way it's going. He's like, I'm gonna keep my control cards in hand, pass the turn to you. Okay, there's a bolt. So this is another line to victory for Richard. I mean, Gwen is now on six, isn't changing the dice, but he is on six. So if you're Richard, you just gotta hope for more burn. Already two uh, lightning bolts, of course, in the bin. And one fireball. There's the pass. So Gwen on nine. Richard on seven is going to drop to five next turn. Actually, Gwen is on six, of course. Sorry. And there we see him using the recall. Ooh, wait a minute. He's got strip mine in the yard, right? Going to get back the strip. Going to strip the bat, Lance. Oh, this is really bad for Richard losing the bat, Lance. This is not great. Going to drop to five. Is he going to die to his own mana vaults? I mean, it's it's a very realistic scenario now. Just a pass turn here. This must be so nice for Gwen. He doesn't even have to do anything. Just pass the turn. Destroy some lands every once in a while. Now drawing another card. Passing the turn. He's on a one. The last turn. Finding a plateau. Does he have an Atok? An Atok. And if it resolves, that can save him. 
Nope, he does not. Game number one, going here to Gwen. So he's up one game. Wow. I didn't see this coming. I didn't expect Richard here to lose to his own mana vaults, but it just happened. So now both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Richard on the play after losing that first one, fighting now for his tournament life. Has to win this game. Remember, this is the quarterfinals, and look at him go here. Library of Alexandria, turn one. That's a great opener for him. Let's see if Gwen can respond. He's got, of course, a city in a bottle. Also has a Chaos Orb and a, a Strip Mine. Those are mainly the two cards, the three cards that he has to answer the Library of Alexandria. And uh, Richard here able to use it for the first time. Going to go up to eight cards in hand, playing a Badlands back up to seven, passing the turn. So are we going to see one of those famous Loa games, or is Gwen able to put some pressure on? We see a Mishra's Factory here, so I wonder next turn if he's going to swing with the Factory. <laughs> it's kind of this golden rule, right, that if you don't have an answer to the Loa, the next best thing is put as much pressure on your opponent as you possibly can, trying to force him to go off the 7. And now uh, 9 cards in hand for Richard. There's a Volcanic Island. And he's a little bit in the tank. Are we going to see something here? Or does he have to discard? So not finding any mana vaults yet. Or Moxon. So Richard really in the tank here. Okay, tapping. What are we going to see here? Tapping two. Are we going to see an Atok, for example, untapping the Badlands again? Okay, there's a Soul Ring. Passing the turn. So this Soul Ring is quite good. There's a Disenchant, though. Yeah, I think this is a really good decision by, uh, by Gwen. You really want to slow Richard down here. There's an Underground Sea. And I still wonder, is he going to uh, animate the Factory? There we see a time walk. Is he going to resolve? I'm sure that uh, Richard boarded in Red Elemental Blast. Exactly. There we see a Red Elemental Blast and a Blue Elemental Blast. So that was quite good here from Gwen. Having the Blue Elemental Blast to uh, protect it. And there's a Volcanic Island from Gwen. And a Soul Ring for him. Tapping. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel here? There's a Sarah. So playing that Sarah out 4-4. Four, four. And that could be problematic here for Richard. That 4 toughness is kind of difficult for Richard to deal with. I mean, he's got bolts, but you need double bolt for that. And he's got uh, two disintegrates and, of course, a fireball. But then you need enough mana. Talking about mana, there's the Mox Emerald. We didn't see a land drop yet here from Richard. Does that mean that, again, he's got mana issues, just like we saw in game number one? Going through his hand again, looks like we're going to see something happening here. Tapping two, copy artifact. What is he going to copy? The soul ring, perhaps? Going for the Mox Pearl. So I guess my best guess is here, because he's going for the Mox Pearl, that he has a disenchant in hand. I wonder if he's then going to use it against the uh, factory if Gwen animates. He does tap the Tundra here, so what is he going to do? Okay, he's going to tap two. Maybe he's got a disenchant of its own. He's going to disenchant the copy artifact. That could be an option. Untapping here. Tapping the underground sea. Okay, animating the factory. He's going to attack for six. So I wonder if we're now going to see a disenchant. Another line of play, of course, for Richard is to first take the damage. Because remember, the uh, Mishra's Factory stay animated until the end of turn. So you can also play the disenchant on end step. And that way you can keep your red mana open for a possible red elemental blast. So I kind of understand if, if of course, he has a disenchant. Time will tell. There's a tap. Ooh, there's a disenchant from Gwen going here for the copy artifact. So playing a Divine Offering. 
And now it's Re Richard's turn to be in the tank here, so he's tapping it for one white floating. Is he going to use that one white? That's the big question. I don't believe there are any... I'm trying to remember Richard's deck list, like his deck photo. I don't think there are any sorts of plowshares in there. Ooh, there's a disenchant. He has to tap, of course, the bad line. So he did have that disenchant. So if, for example, Gwen would have played the disenchant first on the uh, on the Mox Pearl and then in combat animate the factory and attack with it, then Isha wouldn't have been able to uh, to play that disenchant. But anyway, that's water under the bridge. Let's see what he can do. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Wow. Let's look at his hand. Sheevan, two blood moons, a bolt and a disenchant. Yeah, that's not going to help, but I mean, this is not great for Richard because you're giving seven brand new cards to Gwen. I mean, he, he kind of has to, right? Because with the hand he had, there was no answer to the Sarah Angel, and he's already on 14, so you cannot leave that Angel there. And of course, now you're drawing to seven, so you can use your Loa again, go to eight. But I mean... It is very, very, very risky because now you're giving Gwen seven new cards to work with and he's going to draw into card number eight as well. But first, let's see if uh, Richard can still do something here in his turn. So he's going to draw a card, going to go up to eight. I, yeah, exactly. I don't believe he had a land drop. So here's the plateau. And there's the pass. So we see one disenchant there in his hand. That's one of the cards. But a disenchant is not going to help you against the, uh, the Sarah Angel, of course. There's a Mishra's Factory. Yeah, I guess he's just going to swing in for four here, right? Going to put the Richard on 10. There's a Mock Sapphire as well. There's the attack. So Richard dropping to 10 here. Oh, man, it's... It is not looking good. And remember, he's already a game down. Gwen here passing the turn. And Richard has had an active Loa for the entire game too, but still... He's behind, drawing card number eight. Yeah, this is really tough here for Richard. But if he can find a land and a fireball, I believe there's a fireball there. He can burn the angel down. Okay, there's a time walk. And now, of course, he's first going to use the low of it. Let's first see if the time walk resolves, though. So there's the time walk. It looks like there's no counter magic from Gwen here, so it resolves. Then he draws a card for turn. With the Loa, I mean, sorry, not for turn, but for the Loa, of course. He's now on eight. Is he going to do something else, or is he going to discard? He's going to tap two. Oh, there's a terror from the sideboard. Okay, so I didn't think of those. So he doesn't have swords, but he has terror. That's actually, that is really good. But are we now going to see a counter spell though? No counter spell. So this kind of shows to me that Gwen just doesn't have a counter spell, or else he would definitely counter this. I think. There's the bad lands here by Richard. Then again, I mean, maybe Gwen has another angel on, in hand, and he thinks, you know what? I'm just going to wait for something scarier because you've got a whole turn to go. But now it's looking very good again for Richard, you know, taking care of the angel. That was really, uh, you know, the, the first step of action that he had to take. And now he can take his whole new turn. Going to draw an extra card with the Loa. So I wonder if we're now going to see some big creatures, because that is that is what Richard's deck is all about, playing Sheevan Dragons and Triskelions. But so far we haven't seen that yet in this match. We saw one trike, of course, in game one, but there was a quick source to deal with it. We saw one A talk, but that could counter the way. So really curious to see what's going to happen next. Tapping the Batlands, tapping the Emerald, untapping again. There's a strip. No. So Disha really in the tank here. Trying to figure out what the best line of play is. This is the quarterfinals, of course. He is one game down. He's on 10, Gwen's on 20. <laughs> so 
Still has that strip in hand. To play or not to play. Okay, going for the A talk. And it looks like it all resolves. And there's the pass. So it's choosing to keep seven in hand. Just play the A talk out, passing the turn. There's a Swords here. So Swords to Plowshares on the Atok, so uh, it's done. It's dead, but now uh, at least Lichard goes up alive, goes up to 11. There's an Ancestral Recall in the upkeep here of Gwen. And that resolves. So, I mean, Gwen really not finding any counter magic. There is a Tundra. I mean, if I was Gwen, I would start getting a little bit worried now. I mean, what do you need? Yeah, so, asking about the cards here in the graveyard. Maybe trying to figure out how many red elemental blasts and how many bolts and stuff. I mean, he's got a lot of mana and he's got some cards in hand still, so... I mean, just a creature threat would be quite nice here for Gwen, that's kind of what he needs. Like a Suchi or a Sarah. Passing the turn back. So this is great news for d -shirt. It's going to draw a card for turn. And now it's looking really, really good for d -shirt. It's All he needs now is a, is a threat to start dealing some damage. Playing another land, probably seven in hand, so he would use the uh, library here. Or not, of course, he played an Ancestral Recall earlier, so maybe he still has more cards. Because he had seven in hand, plays Ancestral, and then you go to six, then you go up to nine. Ooh, then you're drawn to card ten, so he's got way more cards than seven in hand. So I believe he actually has nine cards in hand then at the moment. He's going to tap two here. Are we going to see? Oh, no, he's going to do more. We've got some glitches on the line as well from time to time, which is quite annoying, but it is what it is. Untapping again. He's keeping us in suspense. Tapping, tapping. Are we going to see a Shivan Dragon? Yeah, Shivan hitting the board at the quarterfinals of the Knights of Thorn. This makes me happy. Beautiful black bordered one as well. I'm really, really jealous. I believe this is a beta copy. If I'm not mistaken. And discarding a bad lance and passing the turn here. So I have one unlimited Sheevan Dragon that I really, really treasure. You know, it's a beauty. But I mean, wow, the black bordered ones are just gorgeous. Oh, there's the maze. This is the perfect answer for Gwen. Then again, I mean, if you're D-Shirt, you're not that worried. Because the D-Shirt's plan is long term with that active Loa. There, he's going to tap five. So is he going to play a threat out? No six. What's going to happen here? A big brain geyser, perhaps? Ooh, there's a big brain geyser. Wow. And this is kind of problematic for Richard. So this brain geyser is going to give him four cards. I believe. Because I see Sol Ring there also tapped. So five cards. If I'm not mistaken. No four. No four. There are four. It's going to draw four new cards. And play a Mox Ruby. And just passing the turn. I mean, the maze is, the maze is good. But we know, of course, from uh, from game one, or actually from this game, when he played the Wheel of Fortune, that he's playing with Blood Moons. 
The thing is, if he plays the Blotman, of course, he turns off his own Library of Alexandria. Then again, he's got more more than enough cards. So could choose, if he has it, of course, to go for Blood Moon. This is better, Strip Mine. Yeah, he still had that Strip. I forgot about that. So Strip Mine on Mace. This is ideal. And now he can swing in. Wow, I mean, that Sheevan is huge. If Gwen doesn't have a Swords to Plowshares, he's in serious, uh, serious problem. 5-5 five, five flying. And remember, you can pump it 1 red plus 1 plus 0. Oh. So if he goes all out, he can deal 10 damage. I don't think he will, though. But he's going to pump it a little bit. 6, 7, 7-5 seven, flyer. And there's a sword supply here. So he could respond to gain more life. But I mean, 7 is quite nice. So he will go up to 18. And I guess the... Uh, the Swords game in response to the pump, so he only gains 5. So he goes back up to 16, still good though. And then we see that uh, Atog being played. And here, of course, you can see that, you know, despite the resolved Brain Geyser, that Richard still has a lot of resources because he's had that library for the entire game number 2. And he's going to use it again. Card number 8. And there we see a Black Lotus. And passing the turn back to Gwen. And let's see what Gwen picked up from the Brain Geyser. If he's uh, able to put some pressure on the board here himself. I mean, the good news for Gwen is that he's still on 20. And he, of course, resolved the Brain Geyser. So he got some card uh, advantage for himself as well. Tapping three here. One red and two. Tapping four. There's a Suchi. Is Gwen going to do something else here? There's a land drop. No, there's a Black Lotus as well. Wow. Look at these cards. Amazing. Cracking the Lotus? Nope. Yeah, cracking the Lotus. Playing another Suchi. I mean, I think if you're a you're like, okay. It's not too bad. Could be worse. I mean, Suchis he can deal with. There's a disenchant on one of them. And it looks like, by the way, that Gwen has boarded out the Savannah Lines because he's facing the Lightning Bolts. And again, Risha drawing more cards from the Loa. So going now uh, back up to eight, I guess. Or are we going to see another Chief and Dragon? That's what I'm hoping for. We also haven't seen a single trike, so that could also be an option. Putting four mana there separate. What's the plan with those? Question mark. I wonder what uh, Richard is planning here. Looks like he's kind of counting the mana, trying to weigh, off, weigh his options out. So we still have that pile there on the right, you know, the three duels and the Mox Emerald kind of separate. He's adding something to the pile. He's going to tap five, it seems. Very slowly, though. <laughs> oh, come on, just play the card. What are you going to do? There's a mind twist. Okay, a mind twist for four. Wow, that's brutal. If this resolves... It's a huge hit here for Gwen. 
I mean, playing against a player with an active Loa and then he plays a Mind Twist. We are going to see a counter spell. Are we going to see a Red Elemental Blast? That's the question. No Red Elemental Blast. Okay, so that kind of works out. So Gwen kind of, uh, you know, saving his hand here with the counter spell. And next turn, of course, he can uh, attack with the Tsuchi. And does Richard have to discard? That's the question. Has, of course, still uh, some, uh, some options with that Black Lotus there. <laughs> Looks like he's going to play a land. I guess he didn't play out a land yet. Or is that a copy artifact in hand? Could copy the Suchi, for example, cracking the Lotus. Yeah, copy artifact there. So I guess he's going to copy the Suchi. Going to tap an extra. Does he have two copy artifacts in hand? Oh, and then he plays a Disenchant. Oh, that is mean. So now he's got the Suchi. So I guess the line here for Richard was, am I going to first Mind Twist and then do the Copy Disenchant? Or am I going to first do the Mind Twist, see if he has a Counterspell? And of course, I mean, it makes sense that it takes time. But uh, it's just too suspenseful for me. You know, I'm like, play the card, show me the card. Anyway, Blue Elemental Blast here on the... Um, Oh, and a Divine Offering. Wow, look at look at Gwen go. I mean, he's got all the answers at the moment. You know, Blue Elemental Blast, Atog, Divine Offering on the Suchi. So he's going to gain four because the Copy Artifact also copies the Casting Cost, actually. There's the attack for two. So some damage for Richard as well. So uh, he's dropping to 14. But it's still looking good for Richard, though. I mean, he's got so many cards. And just passing the turn, though. Three cards for Gwen. Seven for Richard. There's the attack. Richard dropping further down. He's going to go to 12. So he's got half the amount of lives that uh, Gwen has on 24. And Richard drawing some more cards here again with the Loa. I wonder how many cards he drew off that one Loa this uh, this game too. It's it's insane. It's been there since turn one. There's a factory of Richard in the pass. Now remember, um, the factory cannot pump itself yet because of summoning sickness. Are we going to see a bolt here? There's the bolt. There's a counter spell though. Wow! So protecting the uh, factory at yeah, a factory is the only way. To victory, I guess, for Gwen needs to keep his threat alive to try to put as much pressure on the life total here of Richard as possible. Richard now on 10. Draw yet another card from the Loa, so going to 8 cards in hand. Are we going to see another Sheevan? Trike would also be good. Gonna tap two, four, five, and six. There's a Shivan Dragon! So this is an unlimited copy. Five, five flyer. So a new problem for Gwen here. And I mean, it seems to be a matter of time before he's gonna lose uh, this game too, just because of that active Loa. And now again, Drawing a card, drawing an extra card, going back up to eight. It's a bolt. So that bolt is quite nice against the uh, Mishra's factory. If Gwen chooses to animate it again in the future. I mean, I think I think it's time, Yadisha, to turn your Shivan sideways. There he goes, attacking with the Shivan. Is he also going to pump it? And is Gwen going to use his um, sword to plowshares here. So he is going to pump it. So 8, 9 damage. 10 damage. No, 9 damage. So going from 24 takes 9. 
So he goes to 15. Down, 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 and there's a Chaos Orb. So it's, yeah, it's, it's looking so good for Richard here now, passing the turn. I mean, if you're Gwen, if you can get your hand empty enough, like a balance would be quite nice, because that destroys the Sheevan. And, um, and then Richard goes off the lower plan, of course, because he has to discard to the hand size of Gwen. So a balance would be one of those cards that can save him. There's a Sarah. So Sarah, in this case, is... Yeah, you're not going to chump the... Ooh, another... Okay, there's a Mox Jet for a moment there. I thought, is it another Sarah? But it's a Mox Jet. So that's Sarah Angel. I mean, at least you can then attack Richard, who's on 10. And now we see Gwen going through the graveyard. I mean, if he has... Okay, so this is maybe Richard asking how many counter spells and things are in your graveyard. So two counter spells and two blue elemental blasts. Yeah, and that can be quite relevant here. It's gonna tap one. There's a disenchant. Oh, okay, so he tapped one to activate the Chaos Orb. In response, there was that disenchant. Yeah, Chaos Orb, of course, would have been a nice solution for the Sarah. But I mean, Richard's drawing so many cards, there's gotta be a, an answer in there, right? He's playing still with Disintegrates, Fireballs, Terrors. Of course, we don't know exactly how he boarded, it, but we did see that one Terror, so I assume there are more in there. There's a Disintegrate. Are we gonna see a Blue Elemental Blast? There's a Mana Drain, also works, of course. There's a Red Elemental Blast, though. So the Sarah Angel is a goner. Only one card left here for Gwen, yeah, and this is usually what you see, right? Gonna pump it to six, so he's gonna drop to nine. I believe he's got like one more turn. Needs to find a balance, then the balance needs to resolve. If he can find a balance from the top. And says so recall, okay, that's something. No red elemental blast. Can he find a balance to fight his way back into this? Or are we going to go to a 1-1? That's the question here. Three cards for Gwen. Nope, that's it. Picking up the card. So it is 1-1. One, one, and that means we are going to a third game. And what an exciting quarterfinals here at the Knights of Thorn, the 10th edition. Game number three. Here we go. And uh, the winner will advance to the semi-finals. But look at this. Is this a double mulligan? Wow. That's a bad start for Richard. Going down to five. There we see a Tundra. And a Mox Jet and a pass. It looks like Gwen has four cards in hand. So that would mean he also took one mulligan. Yeah, so he also took a mulligan. Okay. So then it's, it's still bad for Richard, but not as bad, at least uh, Gwen also took a mulligan. So now just a pass here for Gwen, so missing a land drop, another volcanic island, there's a time walk. So this is a great start for Richard here, and Gwen having these, these mana issues. It's gonna take his turn. There's a pass though, also no lands for Richard, so this reminds me a little bit of that game one. Now we see a planes from Gwen. There's the pass. Can Richard find lands? No, he cannot. Passing the turn again. It was looking so good for him with the time walk moment. But now he is stuck. Passing again. Wow, that's three turns, no lands. And Gwen has found them again. After the planes, here's the underground sea. Four for him. Look at that tapping out for a Suchi. Must have been tempting for him to just also keep counter magic open. There's an Atok, but that Atok cannot do much with no artifacts to eat. So Gwen is probably just gonna attack for four here. And there's Elisha dropping to 16. There's an underground C. Tapping four more. Are we gonna, yep, another Suchi hitting the board. It was hard to see there for a moment, but yeah, this is serious trouble for Richard because now it's going to go really fast with the double Suchi, at least found a land. 
But he needs white, right? Because with white he can start playing disenchants, maybe divine offerings. That's what he needs. I mean, for a moment I really thought, hey, Richard's doing well after that uh, time walk. But then he couldn't find any lands. And here we can see the creatures in Gwen's deck really doing work, right? The Suchis are going, uh, going for blood probably next turn. Richard just passing here. So it's looking really good for the Belgian player. Will he make it into the semis? Remember, this is game number three, the deciding game. Tapping the Mox Jet, what are we gonna see for a black? Oh, we saw the Soul Ring, of course. So play the Soul Ring, now attacking with two Suchis. Into the red zone. There's a block on one of the Suchis, taking four, going to 12. Yeah, I mean, this is not great if you're chumping. It's a great sign, of course, for Gwen. Can he put more pressure on the board? Do you want to? That's also a question, of course. Gonna tap four. There's a Jam Day Tome. So coming in from the sideboard, he's playing two Jam Days in the side. Passing the turn here to Richard. Okay, that's a land. That's something still no white source, though. I feel he really wants white to kind of deal with these Suchis. There's a Demonic Tutor, okay. Demonic tutor here. What are you going to tutor for? I mean, yes, you could go for Ancestral Recall for three cards, but you're under huge pressure. I mean, a really good card here, of course, is, is balanced, but you don't have a white source to play it out. Maybe if you have a balance in hand, you could go for Black Lotus and you could do something or Mox Pearl. I mean, this is a decisive moment here for Richard's uh, tournament life. He's on 12. He's looking at 8 more damage next turn from the two Suchis. And of course he's taking his time here. I think an Ancestral Recall is not good enough here. I mean, that's a huge gamble. I mean, if he would have a white source, I would just say go for the balance, but he doesn't have that. Of course, it, there could be an option that he maybe has a double disenchant in hand, for example. Then a Black Lotus would be ideal. He can play it out. He can play double disenchant. And also, look at look at Gwen. He doesn't have double blue open. So cannot play a Counterspell or Mana Drain. No, the deck's getting back. What are we going to see here? Really wonder, what did he look up? Yep, yeah, there's the Black Lotus. Gonna crack the Lotus here, probably for three white. Or not, of course. What is he gonna do? There's one disenchant on the book. Wow, that kind of... I mean, I get it. The book is on the long run. The book is the more dangerous card. And then a balance, wow. So he did have the balance in hand, had balance and disenchant in hand. This is really good. There we see a tap though. Does he have anything to stop this? I don't think so, but maybe he wants to play a card out still. He is gonna tap a white. Does he maybe want to sort his own Suchi for some life? That's exactly what happens here. So he's going to gain four. But yeah, this is a brilliant moment here for Richard. This is really what he needed. Two cards now for uh, for Gwen. So that means that uh, Richard will have to discard some cards, though. Yeah, one of the Suchis, of course, is uh, removed from the game. Because that's the one hit by the, uh, by the Swords to Plowshares. And I believe that Gwen is now going up to 24. And Isha can keep two cards, that's all. But yeah, what a comeback here. What a comeback. So the Shivan is going. Three cards now, so I think he's got to discard another one, right? Yeah, three cards. I believe he still has to discard one. If I'm not mistaken, really in the tank here, trying to figure out what he wants to put in the bin. 
And there he goes. So putting the Blood Moon here in the bin. Two cards passing turn back to Gwent. I mean, Blood Moon would have been good here. I wonder what the other two cards are. On the other hand, of course, with Blood Moon, also all your own non-basics become mountains. So maybe that's something that uh, Richard didn't want to happen. So really wonder what those other two cards are. There is a City of Brass. Could animate the factory here to attack. But I mean, is it really worth it taking that risk? Also be considering his deck also wants to always wants to go to six because of the Shivas and the Trikes. So I think this is a wise decision by Richard not animating just passing the turn here. Let's see what Gwen can do. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There's the Sarah Angel. So Sarah here hitting the board. There's a Terror on the Sarah. Are we going to see a Counterspell? No Counterspell. So that was one of the two cards probably that Richard kept in hand. And now two more cards for Richard. <coughs> Tapping, okay, tapping two. Is he animating or playing something out? He's attacking here, okay, gonna put him on 22. Of course, because uh, Gwen didn't have any white mana open, so couldn't disenchant her sword, so it was kind of a safe attack here for Richard. So that makes sense. Gwen here playing a Mishra's Factory, passing the turn. Now Richard drawing a card, two cards in hand. Passing the turn back to Gwen. Is Gwen now also attacking? If he is, he's kind of signaling to Richard that he has a disenchant here. So attacking for two. So this is always nice for Gwen because if Richard animates, he can play disenchant and he can he can kill the factory, which is fine. If he doesn't, he takes two damage, which is fine. That's exactly what happens here. Going to go down to 10. I mean, Gwen's up to 22. He's fine. There we see a plateau. So he now does have six mana. Are we going to see a Sheevan? Tapping six. Sheevan or Trike. Sheevan the Dragon. I love it. 5-5 five, five Flying Powerhouse. Now the question is, does Gwen have an end? So he counters it away. That is too bad, right? Because you're tapping out completely. And then there's one blue mana, one blue elemental blast. Instant speed. And it crushes the Sheevan before it even... Gets to the battlefield. There's the attack for two. So Richard now on seven. Ay, 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 ay. This is really, really risky. I mean, this is really, really tough for Richard. He's on seven. Still has that one Mishra's Factory, though. Probably forced to try to block, even though it's probably going to get disenchanted. There's the animate. There's the attack. Is he going to go down to five? It's going to tap. Are we going to see a bolt here? Oh, no. There's the animate. So he wants to animate to block a quick disenchant from Gwen. It's going to take two. Going to drop to five. And there's the pass. It's not looking great here for Richard. It's looking fantastic for Gwen. Okay, there's another factory, though. That's something. So I wonder if Gwen's going to attack here. I think you do. Remember, he, uh, Richard cannot pump his own factory yet because of summoning sickness. So I wonder if he's now going to take the trade. Going to animate another disenchant though. Ay, ay, ay. Just too many disenchants here from Gwen. Taking care of all those factories. Three life left for Richard. And remember, the winner is going to go to the semi-finals. And that semi-finals will, of course, be here on the channel next week. There we see a soul ring. That's not going to cut it, though, for Richard. Still has those two cards in hand. Passing the turn here back to Gwen. What can he do? There's a City of Brass. Gwen, of course, going to attack it for two, I assume. Going to put Richard on one. If he can play another factory. 
But of course, he already played the city, so that's not going to happen, I guess. But then he could have pumped the factory to three and win this turn already. So going to put him on one. It's looking really, really good for Gwen. Almost there. We see a counter spell there in his hand as well. It looks like he's thinking about something. And there's the pass. So this is the last turn for Richard. It has to happen now or he is out of the tournament. Last card, last chance. It's an ATOC, okay, it's something. Are we gonna see a counter spell though? We know that there's a counter spell in hand here for Gwen, so the question is, is he gonna fire it off here? And then the question is, does Richard have a response? It looks like Richard is saying, it's your go. There's a disenchant, oh, divine offering. Yeah, 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 that is really good. This divine offering is so good here by Gwen. So he's doing this on end step. And it's gone. Yeah, and now, I mean, Richard has to block the Mishra's factory, so then the Atog's gonna die. But at least he's got one more turn. Or not, nope. There's the sword supply shares, needs to do something. But I don't think he can. I mean, he's not playing with any counter magic, I believe. He only has red elemental blast. That's not going to work against the swords to plowshares. It's going to go up to two. <laughs> you can see him change the dice there with reluctance. Animate, attack. That's it. Gwen is. Yeah, red elemental blast. Terror. Oh, the terror is not going to work against the factory. Oh, man. The terrors were so good against those angels, but now they're just not going to cut it for you. And congratulations, Gwen. You are going to go to the semifinals of the Knight of Thorn. And talking about the semifinals, I will be uh, showing you guys the semifinals next week. So if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And also, before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. Let me know how you felt about this match, man. It was a true thriller that uh, game one and game two. Pooh, man. That was, uh, that was something. Anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, before you go, also take a moment, please, to uh, to check out my uh, Patreon page. You can find that on patreon.com slash timmytalks, and uh, the cool thing is you can already become a patron for just $1, and for that dollar, you'll get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.